And it's now my honor to invite to the podium the first of our 2018 Liberty Medal winners, Mrs. Laura Bush. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much, Jeffrey, and thank you, Vice President Biden, and thank you very much, Doug DeVos. Thank you all for this honor, and thank you for hosting George and me at the National Constitution Center today. Thanks to Rod Rodriguez and to Leslie D Zimmerman and to all the veterans and active military here today. Thank you for your distinguished service to our country. President Bush and I are retired now, so we want to spend our afterlife dedicated to the programs of the George W. Bush Institute, including and especially our Military Service Initiative. The Military Service Initiative honors the men and women who've served our country. We're working with them to develop the leadership skills and the tools they need to transition successfully to civilian life. Since 2011, President Bush has hosted veterans at the Warrior Open Golf Tournament in Dallas and the Warrior 100K bike ride at our ranch in Crawford. At these events, George and I are inspired by the strength and the determination of our veterans. While George is watching chips and putts or riding with the Warriors, I like to spend time with the spouses and caregivers who accompany their warriors to Texas. These are the ones who care for the family and manage the home while our servicemen and women are deployed. They help their kids with the homework. They oversee the family finances, and they pray that their husbands or wives in uniform return home safely. Master Sergeant Rocky Arena and his wife Marlene joined us at our ranch in 2017 for the Warrior 100 bike ride. When Marlene talked about Rocky's years of service in the Air Force, she said, I say we served for 25 years. I lived every deployment with Rocky, every trial and tribulation, so that the day I said yes to him, I didn't realize the impact that his service was going to have on me. This is the reason it's so important to make sure that while our servicemen and women receive the support they need when they come home, that we care for their spouses and families too. November is National Family Caregivers Month. So today, on Veterans Day, we must consider how we can help the caregivers now and in the future. There are over 4 million post 9-11 veterans and more than 1 million men and women who are caring for these post 9-11 veterans. And of course, all any caregiver wants is for his or her family to be in good physical and mental health. As veterans transition to civilian life, visible wounds, post-traumatic stress, and lack of stability may make veterans more susceptible to issues like depression and addiction. And of course, when one family member suffers, the entire family suffers, leading to an increase in the risk of behavioral issues and anxiety and depression in military children. Just as veterans need good health care when they return home, caregivers need access to quality care for themselves and for their children. 15% of military caregivers spend 40 hours a week caring for their veteran, and they often spend more hours caring for their children when child care is unavailable. As a result of caregiving, 48% of post-9-11 caregivers have been forced to take unpaid time off from work, and 28% have had to quit working entirely. With these statistics, it's not surprising that many caregivers report that caregiving has caused financial strain. 
Anne Marie Craig joined us at the Bush Institute last month for our Stand to Veteran Leadership Program. Anne Marie is a military caregiver and one of 33 scholars in our inaugural Stand to Veteran Leadership class. Anne Marie's husband, is an Army Special Operations Forces veteran, and they have three children. For many years, Anne Marie worked for the Department of Defense and Intelligence community. But as she watched service members, including her husband, return home, she was inspired to do more. In 2012, she co-founded the Commit Foundation to help veter veterans translate their skills into successful roles and careers for their service. Anne Marie said, this work has been my passion and it's the product of my family's journey with traumatic brain injury. I navigated services as I worked to heal my husband and the many others I met along the way. During a conversation about caregivers last month, she told the Stand To class, there's a group of us that shows up instead of walking out, that builds rather than tears down, and that waters the plants and tends the garden. Our military spouses and caregivers do just that. They tend the gardens at home, creating and maintaining a nurturing place to take care of their loved ones. They have the same priorities as the rest of us, and they have them with more difficulties and obstacles. It reminds me of the old line, Ginger Rogers did everything Fred Astaire did, but she did it backwards and in high heels. <laughs> So to all of the government programs, corporate and nonprofit communities and individuals working to improve veteran transition, I ask that you consider how you can support the hidden heroes and the loved ones who also serve our country. George and I are forever thankful for the brave men and women who volunteer to defend our country. Our military strength is the strength of our nation, our service members are the strength of our military, and our caregivers are the strength of our veterans and wounded warriors. Their devotion to our men and women in uniform and their commitment to their marriage, their family, and to our country is an inspiration to us all.